Hey guys, welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. So it's fusion time again. Here we are again with another fusion. Um, one thing to notice right away, they put this little icon here, which is actually quite a good idea. Um, when I started the game, I didn't even know the fusion bit existed in the portal, to be honest. So for any new players, this is actually pretty handy. And I would say, out of all the fusions that I've been involved in over the last few months or so, this is probably the best for new players, and I'm going to explain why. Um, let's quickly go into it and have a wee look at what you're going to get. So, <clears throat> your legendary you're looking for is Gurtuk Mossbeard. He's a brand new legendary fusion uh, ogre dude. Um, let's just forget about him right now. He's pretty cool. I quite like him. But let's look at the champions you can also get from this. So if you're new to fusions, if, you, if you're new to the game, basically all these champions down here, there's a, either be able to farm them or they create events where you can win these champions. And basically, out of all these epics and all these rares, there's some of the best champions in the game in terms of epics and rares. So forget about the legendary just now. If you're a new player starting out, this event is fantastic for you because you can get yourself this girl, the Soulbound. She is fantastic, like proper end game if you build her right. She can do crazy, crazy damage. Um, Frozen Banshee, probably the second best poisoner in the game for clan boss. I mean, Draco was very good probably number one but I mean she's a rare man I mean she's so so good I use her in my ultra nightmare two key um, team and she's just absolutely nuts so crazy crazy champion also Bulwark Bulwark is top top level clan boss champion to be honest like again he can be ultra nightmare viable and there's there's loads of other ones there's a, a fencer you can you can get from stuff but there's a rage is a good champion there's some really really good champions here um, even the cadaver or whatever they call she he's pretty good but I would definitely say the soulbound the banshee this guy here all extremely good champions am I missing something there was something else um, might be missing something I can't actually remember um, but then we move on to the epics so we've got fan cleric here who's fantastic a lot of people are really liking this champion he's he's kind of new actually so um so he's, I've not actually played much with him, but from what I hear of other people that use him, he's fantastic. So he's really, really top tier. This guy here, um, I've got him actually. He is, I think it's, is it Catacomb Counselor or whatever he's called? He is really, really strong, especially if you don't have a counter-attack champion. He can do like a rush ability, so he can rush people. So he's really, really strong as well. This guy's okay. And Umbral's, for me, like top five epic in the game. Um, so... If anything, if you want to just fuse, say, Bulwark, um, well, sorry, you would win. You would just do the events to win Bulwark, win Frozen Banshee, win the Soulbound Boy, or, or fuse the Umbro. You would do pretty well out of this, but let's go and have a look at the new Legendary. So, first off the bat, he is pretty cool looking. I mean, look at the, he's got the face on his back. He's, um, he's badass, to be honest. He's actually one of the coolest champions I've seen in this game. This, this is my kind of style of character you know the kind of woodland sort of dark sort of ogre kind of guy and I, I think he's just a super cool champion to be honest um let's go i'm gonna go into the actual index so i can see what his actual stats is because here's his end game stats so good hp pretty reasonable attack for a support champion is his things uh, his things are based on attack so that's good he's only got one attack actually um 100 speed it's basically like good but not incredible and then doesn't have much of a doesn't have any increase in any of this stuff um, a little bit of resist that's fine so he's got pretty good stats not like mind blowing pretty good um, so his, his kit's kind of strange he's, he's quite an odd character this guy um, odd in a very good way he attacks one enemy two times places a 50% continuous heal buff on for one turn on all allies under poison debuff so yeah, this will this will kind of make sense once you see the rest of his kit. But basically, if your champions are poisoned, he's going to put continuous heal on them. Um, his A two basically is a cleanse that removes all debuffs from an ally, then heals them, puts a shield on, blah blah blah. So it's pretty good. But uh, it's also on a two turn cooldown, which is good to know. Um, the shield also gets fifteen percent extra, so that shield is going to be up to thirty five percent of their max HP. So it's pretty pretty strong heal. This it's it's quite good. But the reason all this is in place is for this last ability, the A3. So it's placed three poison, five percent poison debuffs on all your allies for three turns. These debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked. 
and an 80% chance of placing block buffs on all enemies for two turns. This is 100% when booked. Uh, sorry, I just hadn't read that last bit properly. Three turn cooldown, so you're going to be able to continuously keep this up. And the reason you want to poison your own champions is because of this passive. So allies under the poison debuffs inflict 7.5% more damage for each poison debuff on them. Stack into a maximum of 30, this damage increase applies to all of their skills. So ah, this, is, this is a weird one. It also increases allies resist by 15, so you could potentially... Um, this doesn't actually say maximum. So, I mean, at the most you can get 4 poisons on someone to get the 30%. So that's going to be like the three from him, and then someone like the only one that springs to mind is a cult brawler because he poisons himself. Um, although, yeah, because it specifically says poison debuff, it doesn't say any other debuff. Um, yeah, so that's going to be like that's the maximum of 30, but this doesn't seem to have a maximum. So, someone like a cult brawler, not that you would use him in arena or anything anyway, but it would be quite cool to have like you know, <coughs> seven or eight poisons on him then he's just going to resist absolutely everything um, this is good to know actually this isn't resistible so if it says here debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked so that works quite well with the fact that this increases the resistance because that would be stupid you know if he puts more poison on then you can't get any more on him so yeah that's quite crazy also it would be quite interesting to maybe try this with like um, what's the set there's a set that um, I can never remember now but it decreases random cooldowns so you can maybe just play this and play that again um, and really boost your resistance up but it's a it's a pity this caps out at 30% um, although I might be completely wrong here because it might need to be 30% because it might just be crazy so in the game you've got things like you've got big increased attack which is 50% I think you've got 60% increased defense which scales off their damage to defense characters but the thing about this ability is this does 30% on everything so your whole team so you can have an attack based champion a defense based champion an HP based champion all on the same team and they'll all do an extra 30% damage with this guy so that makes it quite interesting especially if you can team it up with you know increased attack increased defense and this I think this might be pretty damn good I really just have to play test the guy it's kind of like when Rotos came out I think if you look at my video when Rotos was the fusion, I wasn't totally sure on him, but I read his kit and I thought to myself, you know what, this actually seems insane, but I'm not going to go overboard because it might not play out the same as what I'm thinking, but it was insane. Um, and with this guy, I'm kind of getting the same feeling with. Um, he's pretty, he's decent enough stats, but this kit's something totally new. It's very, very support based. You know, it's. Um, it's about as support as you can get to a character and th this scent might end up coming more handy than you think because the way this guy works he's, he's going to be doing five percent poisons to your to your allies so it's kind of dangerous you're going to be taking damage from it and um, oh i forgot to also say it's an 80 percent which is 100 percent when booked placing the block buffs debuff on all enemies for two turns which is actually really really good as well um i think that's been overlooked here because block buffs is really really strong and for two turns um I use Umbral Enchantress quite a lot, and she does that extremely well actually, so I mean block buffs just null and voids a lot of people in arena, um, things like Siffy, boom, put block buffs on, and like our abilities become useless, and she's like the best character in the game, so yeah, I, think, I don't know about this guy, I've got a funny feeling he might be very very good, um, the continuous heal is just a kind of a trigger to stop the, the poisons doing too much damage, but yeah, I'm going to be interested to see him. I for one definitely am going to fuse him, I've got most of the champions to do it already and I've already kind of built up a really good strong umbral so I'm going to take the umbral from the event and use that to fuse because um, I don't want to don't want to use her up but yeah yeah he's super excited about this champion I think he's going to be good who where do I think he's going to be good in um oh it's hard to tell until you play test him the two areas I'm excited to use him in I'm not saying he's going to be very good but I'm excited to try him out in is number one arena because of block buffs, singly block buffs. If he didn't have block buffs, I wouldn't probably use him in arena, but I think the fact that if he's 100 speed, if I could, because you do not need to worry about this guy for attack, he's got like zero attacks anyway, no crit damage, you could just pump everything, similar to an Arbiter in speed, um, and you want him to play first, you want him to pump this onto your, onto your uh, guys and block buffs on them, that way if you can get him to go, you know, if you've got a crazy fast Arbiter, I'm thinking, 
quick hit turn meter boost he's maybe up at like 300 speed then he's definitely going to go second you play him block all their buffs as long as he's got good accuracy he needs he needs accuracy for that um which might be an issue we'll have to see um especially at high level plat but even if not it's going to put this this damage thing on on all your champions then you've already got the increased attack from arbor then you've got the extra 30 percent from him and then hit with a ghost spawn or something you know a massive hit for like aoe decreased defense and then finish off with your last champion and that might be all she wrote for most teams actually hmm it's gonna be interesting yeah i think i think this might be pretty good you know i, th I think so but the other area sorry i should say is clan boss i'm quite excited to see him in clan boss um the good thing about clan boss is i could potentially run him straight into my unkillable team which i'm going to be doing a video on soon guys i know i've promised it for ages but life is busy 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 so it's quite hard just now but um yeah i think this guy could slot straight into there um just to try out and just let's let's test and see if this 30 percent extra damage which might not it's not going to be 30 percent. it's only going to be 22.5 because i'm not going to be able to reliably i mean i'll definitely be able to keep a cult brawler in the big problem with the cult brawler is the more stuff you put on him you might end up taking that extra turn when he removes five debuffs which is that's an issue because that screws up the kind of turn rotation so i think you're looking at a 22.5 in clan boss really um i should probably say in arena as well it's unlikely you're going to get 30 percent. it's going to be 22.5 percent. so i've kind of been saying that wrong but um yeah even 22.5 percent damage all the way because you if you have him fast enough i'd have to work it out but if you have him straight away that's 22.5 percent damage throughout all 50 turns of the clan boss granted you're giving up a spot for that so you're gonna have to work out if that creates more damage than someone like a razen would with a decrease decreased defense and weaken or just another poisoner or a debuff extender it's just gonna be trial and error we're just gonna have to see how he goes but um I've got a funny feeling Arena might be where he's at. Um, I don't see him doing that amazing in dungeons, but I might be totally wrong, totally wrong there. But we'll see. The dungeons are a wee bit short. This guy seems like a bit more of a kind of longer, longer term or new can. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm excited to use him. Uh, anyway, let's quickly have a look at. I'm blabbing here. I know. I always blab. Um, news. Let's have a look at the stuff. So if you're new to this, this is kind of how the fusions work now. Um, to fuse them you're going to need these four champions, Catacomb, Counselor, Fine Cleric, Seneschal, I think that's how you say it, a number of Enchantress. Um, to do, you can get every champion directly through events, challenges, well aside from Catacomb, Counselor, who you need to fuse, but you can also get everyone you need to fuse them from events too, so from, you can get everything you need from events. Um, I'm quite fortunate, I'm pretty sure. I've got Catacomb Counselor as well. Like you see, he's a very good champion in his own right. Um, but um, yeah, so to get him, you have to get these four champions here. Um, I've got Soulbound. You have to get him from an event, that from an event, and from an event. But yeah, that might be it. It's quite resource intensive, I'm not going to lie. Um, but getting everything else from the from the events is quite cool. So where, where do you get them all? <laughs> fine cleric is available from this <laughs> champion training event which is probably too hard for most people i'm not gonna lie there's quite a lot of points you need for this um you're talking twenty thousand points that's a lot like i'm end game and i play this a lot and i struggle to get that 25 20 000 points unless i'm just like got a bulk of like level six champions that i'm needing to to level up um sorry rank five champions that i need to level up yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I, I've, I've yet to hit the 30,000 mark, so I, I really think this is massively overpowered, uh, overpriced for the for the one legendary skill tome. For, for, for me, this would... For 30,000 points, I mean, the sheer amount of stuff you've got to do to get there, I would want, like, five Void Shards or one Sacred here and, like, like four, four or five legendary tomes or something. Three or four, maybe? I don't know. I have to be more than this anyway. That's hopeless. Um... But I, you could probably grind 20 if you really put your head down and it's it's two weeks long actually so i guess it is, it is quite long i think the last one was maybe a bit shorter but um so that's how you get that one as you can see you can get this guy here from a dungeon divers event coming up and a summon rush you can get umbral straight from the summon rush which is pretty cool problem is your summon rushes aren't the easiest thing to get the rewards from you have to 
you have to kind of spend a bit of money normally unless you've saved up your shards. Um, so find cleric, or you can get these four champions, and these all these four champions you can get from all these events. Then it's really cool because they actually tell you the exact dates these events are going live. And what you want to do is you want to min max your kind of your your um, energy use during these things. So. For instance, uh, the Cudgeler, whatever you call it, available from the Dragon Tournament, May 12th to 14th. Now, what you want to look at, there is a Dungeon Divers event that starts on the May 13th. So, I would probably hold off today, May 12th, doing the Dragon Tournament until tomorrow hits, because then you're going to get double the rewards. You're going to be getting the rewards from the Dragon Tournament and the Dungeon Divers event. Rather than doing them both separately, it's going to cost you more energy. So. That's kind of how you want to do these things. Is really just look through all the events, time when you're going to do what, and maximize your uh, maximize your rewards from the energy spent. And it's going to save you a ton of energy and a ton of time, and incidentally, probably a ton of money if you if you do spend money on this game. Um, Seneschal, you available from Dungeon Divers event. This is a long event again. So this is May thirteenth to May twenty second. That's pretty cool. And the Summon Rush Umber Enchantress. Yeah, that's just coming up tomorrow. So that that is probably going to be fairly... I don't know. It depends how far up the the um, the reward section they put Umbro. Umbro's very good. She's extremely good. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have her up at like, you know, 3,000, 3,500 points or something. But hopefully not. Hopefully they put her down a wee bit and that would be cool. Um, Capricorn Counselor, you have to f um, get all of these champions from these tournaments. Um, that is kind of an issue. It's going to take a wee while, but if anything, if you just want Catacomb Counselor, he's very, very good. So, um, all in all, really, if you're a new player, if you're brand new to this game, I personally wouldn't put the effort into trying to get this guy. And I know, like, legendaries are, especially fusions, are one off, and people, a bit of people wish they got Santa when he was available. Granted, he was a very easy fusion, but, um,. I just don't see this guy being useful to people new new to the game. So like the first legendary you get in the game is really gonna boost your account. And to be honest, this guy needs to be played he's quite niche and he needs to be played with certain other champions and he needs to you know, he's he's an end game champion I would say, and I think he's gonna be a very good end game champion, but he's not like an end game champion like like a Valkyrie or Sifi or something like that's just that's just gonna totally skyrocket your account in every single area. This guy's very niche, does one thing kinda different. I might be totally wrong, this is all speculation, but I would say I, I would probably go for um Frozen Banshee, this guy, um whatever his face, can never remember his name, Bulwark and the Soulbound Boyer just now. Maybe even the, the Rage Monger, he's pretty cool actually, I quite like him. Um What have we all got? Yeah, with Painsmith. Yeah, there's, there's some decent champions here, definitely. So, um, yeah, just just try and get a hold of these. And then out of these these uh, epics, one, two, three are all top-tier epics, to be honest. Um, <coughs> especially Umbro. Umbro's extremely good. She's fantastic in Faction Wars. She's got my team right up to the end of Faction Wars in that, in that discipline. This guy's awesome. Um, yeah, very cool. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, anyway. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you're going to be fusing this guy or not. I definitely am. I cannot wait to play with them. I'm going to try my best because I've got the champions already to fuse them as soon as possible because I can get Umbral tomorrow from the summon event. So if I can get them in like the next three or four days, I'm going to boost them up straight away. I've got all the brews and all the chickens to do it. So get them up to level 60, gear them up and just book them up and just try them out for you guys and let you guys see how good or terrible he actually is so you guys don't have to waste your resources like i did so that is the plan hope you enjoy it now please like and subscribe to the channel please it really helps me out and have a great day folks take it easy